भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नम भगवते वासुदेवाय Continuing with our lovely chapter 14, Brahma's Prayers, text 28, 10, 14, 28. We're going to hear the rope and snake example again. I'll read the translation, summarize, and then we'll go forward. It's a long purport. O、oh, unlimited Lord, the saintly devotees seek you out within their own bodies by rejecting everything separate from you. Indeed, how can discriminating persons appreciate? The real nature of a rope lying before them until they refute the illusion that it is a snake. So, we touched on this yesterday evening. What is there that exists separate from Krishna? Answer nothing. Or anything that exists has its connection with Krishna. So, rejecting everything separate from Krishna. Krishna has to do with、um, the misidentification of separateness, you know, upadis and so forth. You know, the idea of there's, there's、um, a spiritual reality and then there's the illusion that's covering spiritual reality, and that illusion is something that is covering Krishna. We'll hear something further. So, in the, in, the, in the purport, we're going to hear four different examples of seeing similar to what we heard before the soul, super soul, Bhagavan, and Swayam Bhagavan, Krishna, and Vrindavan. And the principle discussed before was by meditation on that which is spirit. Sat, then sat dispels a sat or illusion, illusory influence of matter. So, souls, conditioned souls, are covered by bodies. The、um, universe is covered, covering uh, um, the supreme soul, Garbha Dakshay Vishnu, and, and, and so forth. So, that there's, there's, the previous verse was those who are deluded. This verse is the saintly devotees. And the saintly devotees, to meditate on Sat, it requires, this is the main point, da, 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 the main point, it requires letting go of the misconceptions of coverings, identifying something according to its coverings or material designations, say that word. Because you can't see the, the soul, you can't see the spiritual dimension as long as there's attachment to the material dimension. So that's the detachment principle. Without detachment, there isn't going to be progress towards Sat. So here we go. Jiva Goswami writes The cause of ignorance. Is explained in this verse. Pretty good. O、oh, all pervading Lord Ananta, because you are all pervading, those with discrimination, Santaha, seek you, Bhavantam, within the universe. This is Garba Dakshe Vishnu. They desire to attain you who have no faults and have all good qualities as Swayam Bhagavan. 
So it's not Garbhadakshya Vishnu specifically, it's Krishna who has appeared within the universe. And he's come to see him. We heard yesterday commentary saying, seeing you is different than meditation because otherwise I could have just stayed in Brahma Loka and meditated upon you. And why would I bother to come here to Vrindavan? Because you're Swami Bhagavan. I wanted to have your darshan. I came. And what do the saintly devotees do? What do they do? They give up things other than you since they are not satisfied. So Krishna's response, quote, The universe is a covering over me. How can they attain me there? Response, this is the talk of unintelligent. They know you as the effect. We heard some time back, verses back, the Lord is the cause of the universe and in one sense is the universe, in the non-different sense is the universe. They know you as the effect, which reflects a position of the qualities of you, the Lord, the ultimate cause. Neither searching for spiritual or material forms, they search out the shelter of everything. This is this detachment idea, you know, the, the material conception of things. Leaving aside the material conception of things, material forms, they're searching out you who are the shelter of everything. That's intelligent persons. An example is given of such people of ordinary discrimination. Then he goes to gradations of higher discrimination. In giving up all the expansion forms, there is a method of concentrating on the individual. First, they reject the contamination of the bodies and attain the pure Atma, the giver of consciousness to the body. This is the Nirvishesh Brahman. Nirvishesh Brahman. That's my vat. Nirvishesh Brahman. Without Visheshas without attributes. That's a, one approach. But this is rejected by Dhruva. And he quotes 4, 9, 10 Bhagavatam. And this translation here, Jiva's, the bliss of your servant available for meditating on your lotus feet or from hearing about your pastimes from the devotees is not available in your form of greatness known as Brahman. What to speak of the happiness for those who fall from the pleasures of Swarga. And that's, here's the BBT, this is Prabhupada's translation of that same verse, 4, 9, 10. My Lord, the transcendental bliss derived from meditating upon your lotus feet or hearing about your glories from pure devotees is so unlimited that it is far beyond the stage of Brahmananda, wherein one thinks himself merged in the impersonal Brahman as one with the Supreme. Since Brahmananda is also defeated by the transcendental bliss derived from devotional service, then what to speak of the temporary blissfulness of elevating oneself to the heavenly planets, which is endowed, excuse me, which is ended by the separating sword of time. Although one may be elevated to the heavenly planets, he falls down in due course of time. That's four, nine, ten. Bhagavad Gita similarly says, Brahmanohi Pratishtaham, I am the basis of Brahman. So now that's one way of meditating on jiva in the Nirvishesh Brahman meditation. Next, the Antaryami is the reveal of the pure jiva. 
quoting Bhagavatam 2.2.8. Some yogis, you know, so second chapter is uh, what is it? Lord of the Heart. Meditation on the Paramatma feature, chapter 2, Canto 2. Some yogis meditate upon the Paramatma measuring one pradesha. So one pradesha means eight inches. Some yogis meditate upon the Paramatma measuring one pradesha who resides in the heart within the body and who holds the lotus wheel conscient club in his four hands. So Nirvishesh Brahman Paramatma meditation. Since this form, that's Paramatma, shows fewer qualities, the Garbhadakshayi form is more complete. He is the Antaryami of all the jivas together. Thus he and his avatars are described in the third canto. The antayami of all universes, now we're going up from Paramatma, Garbha, Daksha, Vishnu, Karna, Daksha, The antayami of all the universes is Karna, Nava, as indicated by Bhagavatam 2642, Adyo, Vatara, so Adya, the first avatar, Adyo, Avatara, Purushaha, Parasya. Mahavishnu, the first Purusha, is an expansion of Bhagavan. That's Jiva's translation. Here's the BBT translation, Prabhupada's. Karanar Vashayi, Vishnu, is the first incarnation of the Supreme Lord, and he is the master of... Eternal time, space, cause and effect, mind, the elements, the material ego, the modes of nature, the senses, the universal form of the Lord, Garbhadakshay Vishnu, and the sum total of all living beings, both moving and non-moving. Thus, Karana Vashayi is the first Purusha. Finally, you are established supreme by various verses, such as Bhagavad Gita 10.42, by just one portion of myself, Paramatma, I am firmly established in this universe. So he's, uh, he's supreme above Paramatma. Or Vishnu Purana. The Shakti of Vishnu is situated in a ten millionth portion of Vishnu. Then there is a procedure. So we're going this hierarchy. Then there is a procedure by thinking of the Lord as the totality of all jivas. First, such meditators think of you as the universal form composed of Indra Chandra and other devatas. Later, however, because this form is temporary, they think of you as the Antaryami of the universal form. By some good fortune, we have attained you today. The words in verse 27 were appropriate. Then, there is the Vaishnava procedure. It is not proper to say that since the supreme entity is the shelter of maya and possesses vidya, it, the supreme entity, is defeated by avidya in the domain of maya. This is mayavad philosophy being addressed. The difference between atma and paramatma is accepted, meaning Mayavadis don't and Vaishnavas do. Since they, 
that Atma and Parama may have different qualities, they are accepted as having different Swarups. They cannot be divided by arrangements such as cutting or reflecting. The soul cannot be cut. And the, the reflection is another one of the Mayavad ideas. Though one may claim that the supreme object is eternally cut by Upadis, it is impossible for it to be the object of cutting, since Brahman is not subject to other objects. It is impossible for Brahman to have a relationship with Upadis for reflection, since reflection cannot be applied to an object which is without qualities, all-pervading, and without limbs. Brahman is invisible anyway, so how could it be reflected as a jiva? And there's more Mayavadi, you know, conversation, real technical language, so I didn't include it. Therefore, One supreme entity exists eternally in four varieties by his intrinsic inconceivable energy. He is like the sun with internal light extending itself by rays externally. His inconceivable energy is like the amazing effects of gems, mantras, or herbs in curing patients. From Vedanta Sutra, Shrutes Tushabha Muladvat. That is, the Lord can only be understood by Scripture. And another, Atmani Chaivam Vichitras Chahi. The Lord has variegated powers. And last, supported by the Bhagavatam. Kapila Dave's teachings. You distribute your powers of creation, maintenance, and destruction by dividing them up according to the gunas. You are creation, maintenance, and destruction. You are without material activities. Your desires are never unfulfilled. You are the Lord of all the jivas. You are the possessor of unlimited, inconceivable energies. In this way, you carry out your activities. That's it. And there's more in the in the commentary for Jiva, but it's that's it for this morning. So summary. Similar to how we began, the, the Brahma is giving us uh, Krishna Tattva, truth about Krishna, specific to the categories of Jiva and Prakriti. Sambandha Gyan, knowledge of the relationship of Jivas and Prakriti, is, uh, should be pretty simple, but it seems to be not so simple because they're different persons with different ideas and they have different ideas by the influence of the material energy or their conditioning or the modes of nature or uh, their foolishness because that's how that language was used before. They're looking for that which is the highest truth other than where the highest truth is, whether it's the living entity, or Paramatma, or Bhagavan, or this other interesting you know, meditation upon this totality of all living entities, which implies meditation upon Mahavishnu, because he's the resting place and support of all the living entities. So there are different approaches, different schools of thought, or methods of trying to go beyond ignorance 
but ignorant people use methods that prevent them. And so, therefore, the, the, the thrust of this verse is detachment from the coverings or the illusory dimension or features of the absolute truth needs to be in place before you can recognize the Supreme Lord as he is. Very simple example, very practical. I mean, the rope and snake example has many different ways of employing it, but it's a classic um, philosophical point. They may appear to be alike, although they are not. There's, there's physical features that may cause them to be misunderstood or misidentified. Either way, but the more common is seeing a rope to be a snake. It's something that the Maya bodies use as well. So it's not, they don't have a monopoly or a franchise on throw up and snake metaphors. Here it's letting go of the material conception of things is necessary, it's not optional, before getting a proper spiritual conception of things or a particular thing, whether it's the soul or super soul or something, Krishna and Vrindavan. One isn't going to understand Krishna and Vrindavan as long as one holds on to material conception. So there's varieties of material conceptions of who is Krishna. And some of them are identified. The list is quite long, actually, how Krishna is seen. And, and you know, commonly is seen in it as an ordinary human or a special version of a human because of his human-like form and human-like activities. So he's, he's just a good version of us, or even some people, he's a bad version of us. He's bad, so why do people worship a bad person? Anyway, so there's different, different ideas that are in the category of misconception. The point being, those misconceptions have to be discarded. The, the conception that the rope is a snake has to be discarded before you can see it as a rope. And it's not recommended just uh, blindly discard the material conception or other than the spiritual conception. Because what will happen is if the, if, if the conception is just mechanically discarded, the, the attention will go back again to the material conception. That's the nature of illusion or conditioning. So it has to be, the discarding of the material conception has to be uh, strong and supported by scripture and saintly people to help one get beyond the material conception. The, 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 the truth of the living entity is the covering. That's a misconception. And we, we certainly, we've read the philosophy. We, we, we would all agree the real, real person is the living entity within. But to keep, to, to move into the realm of transcendence, it requires more than just a conceptual acceptance. We're a spirit soul. It's, it's a beginning, conceptual acceptance. Or spirit soul, and then comes the the more more deep absorption in the spiritual conception. In the end, so the point is, an obstacle of that is notionally letting go of the material conception is not sufficient. So, and there's degrees of, and then there's the final is the Vaishnava position. Degrees of moving in that direction. So the, the, the glorification in Brahma's prayers overall 
as in like Kunti's prayers, for example, is bhakti. He's teaching bhakti, what it is and what it isn't and how to distinguish between what it is, what it isn't, and how to cultivate it. Just like in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, after Krishna is describing what is knowledge, Prabhupada speaks, it's, it's the process of knowledge, then what's the object of knowledge? Gayam. Here's the process of knowledge. Acharya Upasana, Mai Chananya Yogena, Bhaktir Avyabhicharini. That's a process of knowledge. And then there's items of knowledge, so there's in the category of knowledge. Then what's the object? So with, with, with the process of knowledge needs to be taken up using that mind of reasoning. The process of knowledge needs to be taken up with letting go of the material conception of what the process is and what the object is. It's, it's very similar to the Ten Offenses, thinking of the chanting of the Holy Name to be a material activity, a karma kanda activity. Even, you know, a virtuous material activity. It's not just a virtuous material activity. And one who thinks that way is offensive from the Ten Offenses point of view. And from this perspective, one, one, will not under, no, one will not receive the holy name or bhakti or the deity or the devotee's association or the bhakti process itself. One will not receive it fully. And maintaining material attachments, even we understand so th th this is, that's another way of saying the same thing that's being said here. One has to let go of the material conceptions of things. Although the language is saying that which is not connected to the Lord, everything is connected to the Lord, including illusion. Because what can exist if it doesn't come from the Lord, including illusion? It comes from the Lord. But the illusion is not seeing, the, illus the illusion is not seeing the connection. But seeing, you know, the covering to be the Lord or the Supreme or the highest truth or that which, that happiness or that which what is searching for. It's, uh, it's a gradual cleansing process, isn't it? And Brahma is, is helping us. He's our the head of our sampradaya, and he's teaching us. He's, he's expressing to the Lord his realizations, and he's teaching us, and Vyasadeva is teaching us to go to transcendence, you know, not in an improper way, in a proper way. There's degrees. So we heard that from Jiva Goswami. Let's see if there's some discussion. Philosophy topics are a little arduous. Maharaj, I have several questions. Because very nice philosophy you presented. thing is that I was thinking Kapil Dev's teachings. I have a burning question. He said, he said, Purusha will, Prakriti will be defeated by itself, just like in Karma Sandarbha that Jim Goswami explains. He gave one example that a math stick, when you are burning, the math stick, the wood is burnt. So, so I will, I will, I'm not able to relate the fire is what and wood is what. 
లైక్ ఈ వాట్ యూ కెన్ సే లైక్ ఈ ప్రకృతి ఈజ్ రిఫర్ టు వాట్ లైక్ ఈ ఊడ్ ఫైర్ ఇన్ దాట్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ help purusha in prakriti so what does prakriti refer to and there's an example of a match and fire and wood and when the match is struck it consumes the wood so what is the relation with that example this this prakriti wood or fire this is really off topic it's off topic nice try <laughs> the again another point sorry but i have to yeah. have to have discuss so, what you, you want to know is prakriti wood or fire that's your question yes in that example well, okay. why can, why can't it be both in the example there's wood in within the wood there's fire within the wood there's fire so why it can't be that fire is within the wood and fire comes out of the wood it's fire stored and fire active is why it can't be both prakriti okay okay again manas they are regarding that uh, so he, he said kapil dev said that he is giving one statement like we we can defeat the death we can defeat the death so and we when our subtle body like you know like maharaj explained that like that don't go back to krishna so for example so i was wondering what will go to krishna because we cannot go to we cannot take our grass body and we cannot take our subtle body then then what is going there and how can you defeat the death internal potency doesn't require external potency to act internal potency carries a living entity back internal potency is not dependent upon external potency to do what internal potency does particularly taking living entity back and then the activity similarly is by the internal potency how are we doing anything else covid um goranj i too have a few questions um when you were summarizing the class towards the end um you mentioned the the glorification in lord brahma's prayer just like in queen kunti's is of bhakti it's included in bhakti what i understood is that lord brahma is glorifying bhakti yes through his prayers yes just as queen kunti is yes So yes I said that So um we read so many different prayers from so many different devotees in the Shrimad Bhagavatam and there is such variety of expression and such yeah. diversity yeah. stemming from the devotees own personality their relationship with Krishna their rasa 
Yes, um, yes. Their realization. Yes. Um, so I'm wondering, is there, we know that at the end of Lord Brahma's prayer, Krishna, you know, simply smiled and wanted to get back to being with the cowherd boys. Um, is there some consistency or pattern that we see in Lord Krishna's reaction to these different varieties of prayers? And does that mean something for us in terms of, you know, like personally for me, I, I'm quite lost in Lord Brahma's erudition. I'm, I'm, I'm really not catching a lot of it. And so I'm, I'm quite impatient to, you know, um, get back to the Canto 10 pastimes. Do we see? Those are two different points. Yeah. How much of it you're catching and the, the main thrust of your, the first part of the question is, is there some thread or some principle we're to understand about how Krishna responds to different prayers? Well, I don't know if there's a fundamental truth Indic you know, to, to be revealed by how Krishna responds to different prayers other than uh, he's a person and he's in his own way reciprocating with each devotee. And he's, you know, even with one devotee, it's not always the same way he reciprocates with that one devotee. It's different ways with different, the same devotee in different circumstances. So it's quite spontaneous and quite specific to the mood and, you know, the, the, the heart of that devotee. And that's, the, that's what I understand is what, what's the takeaway from how Krishna responds to different prayers. It's very customized, very personal. And even with one devotee from one time to another time. <clears throat> My thought is going to, uh, because there are two circumstances, when Akura first comes to Vrindavan, and then after Krishna goes to Mathura, there's exchange, Krishna goes to visit the home of Akura. And the, the conversation between the two is very different in those two circumstances, but the same person. And he is offering praises to Krishna in both circumstances, and the response is quite different. Because, you know, for different reasons. So that, that's just an example of what I had said. Uh, when you were reading the commentary, you mentioned ordinary discrimination versus higher discrimination. Yeah. I didn't catch it. Well, ordinary discrimination sees by the, the coverings, the, you know, the characteristics of the covering. That's ordinary discrimination. And then extraordinary discrimination makes higher standards of discrimination like Atma, Paramatma, Bhagavan, Swayam Bhagavan. But ordinary discrimination is what I just said. That's my understanding. There may be other ways of uh, expressing or explaining ordinary discrimination. So related to that, I have a question about uh, one of the prayers of Lord Brahma expresses about upadhis of, that Krishna does not take on. Upadhis. Right. So he's not affected by it. Um, so question... Is that referring to like the ordinary discrimination? I, I don't know. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I find it hard to grasp. What are the upadhis that Lord Brahma is talking about? Because everything about Krishna is transcendental. So which upadhis are being referred to? It, it refers to those who are nirvishesh Brahman folks. He has no material qualities. They just say he has no qualities. 
And to think that he has the qualities, that's an upadi. Because all he is, all, all the, all the only thing that exists is one thing, Nivishesh Brahman. Then it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lengthy, mind-bending, word-juggling exercise to say Brahman becomes covered. There, all there is is Brahman, and Brahman covers Brahman. And then it gets into this territory that's called Nirvachaniya, where you can't, even, you can't explain it. There's no words to explain it. It just... So, it's word juggling. <laughs> but that's Upadi's covering Brahman. You no, know, so there's, there's jivas, and there's gradations of jivas. There's demigods, and there's, you know, Brahman's kshatras, vaishas, and sudras. And there's insects and lower life forms. So those are all Upadis. But then that same upadi notion, as far as if you're an impersonalist, then it gets superimposed on Parabrahman, but they don't see Parabrahman. It's just like another upadi. All there is is Brahman. This idea of jiva and, and, and Paramatma distinct, that's an upadi. And then that there's Bhagavan distinct from Paramatma, that's an upadi. There's avatars, that's an upadi. It's just, you know, it's a whitewash. Just take out your bucket of whitewash and paint it over everything, and it's, that's an upadi, and all there is is Brahman. That's how they use it. That's not how we use it. Are we ready for online? Arjun General, they give a little one or two phrase introduction. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my amazement. Yes, yeah, skip it. Should I read all of this? No, skip it, please. Thank you. Thank you. Govinda Mohini, Devi Dasi. We hear the words Brahmavadis and Mayavadis. Is there a difference between the two? If there is, can you please explain the difference? They're sometimes used interchangeably often used interchangeably but there is a distinction and the distinction is uh, it's, if Mayavadi is just a philosophized idea whereas Brahmavadi is one who actually has Brahman realization the philosophized idea says what we just talked about but it's not realization of Brahman factually it's a philosophy that doesn't hold water <laughs> It's a philosophy that has no substance. And so a Brahmavadi is one who has realized Brahman. Or they have a, an explanation, a doctrine that speaks about, Vada means doctrine about Brahman. So in that sense, they're interchangeable. Okay. Um, Arch of, Arch of idea. Number one, is illusion and forgetfulness of Krishna the same? Well, they're certainly, you know, related, if not the same. Number two, at present stage of our sadhana, how can we understand our degree of illusion? Well, there's, I like Bhakti Vinod Thakur's example, that is, attraction for sat and detachment from asat. That's a, a very simple standard of the degree of delusion or degree of illusion. Okay, this is a few from Param Karuna. Ah, we're going to try to weave it together. When Lord says people cannot know him because of covering of the universe, 
In reply, Jiva Goswami says, those people worship you considering you effect, the effect. So rejecting the false conception, they attain impersonal Brahman that's still incomplete. Or maybe he's asking, is that still incomplete? Next, he says, also understanding the vibhutis or greatness of the Lord, as mentioned by you the other day in the class related to Asatrishna, mm. is still incomplete. The, for example, the Lord is inside, the Lord is outside, he's near, he's far. Yeah. However, the recommendation given by Marj Druva seems to be more appealing and easy. But, as you mentioned in the class the other day, Bhakti Sandarbha specifically describes the technical words, viputis, of the Lord as being greater than the greatest, smaller than the smallest, to describe the greatness of the, greatness of the Lord. However, it seems Dhruva Maharaj's prayers, Prahlad Maharaj's prayers, uh, seem to be more easy in understanding the Lord, although not specifically the form of the Lord in Vrindavan. Am I thinking correctly? Sounds good. I don't have no disagreement or course correction. Sounds good. Okay. And is Hiranyagarbha referred to Karanakashayi Vishnu or Garbhadakshayi Vishnu? Or the universal form, and the answer is all three, depending upon context. That's it. That's it. Okay, Prabhupada, Ki, Jai.